Hi, hello everyone. So welcome to Japan, Yokohama City. I will be presenting uh, possibility of Oceania continental time with Rust. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Tor. So I am a senior engineer at Gitpod, but this presentation is not related to my work at all. I am active on the internet with this ID, so please have a look if you like. I'm also a member of a GitHub organization called Containers, which manages the Podman, etc. There, I am developing Yoki, a container time in Rust, uh, which I will be presenting in this talk. By the way, uh, it's helpful, so I live in Yokohama city, so the hall was closed by. So, since uh, you came all the way to Yokohama, so I'll just introduce, uh, introduce one hidden famous sightseeing spot. Do you like VR? Just a short work from here is a convenience store called Kureijin 7-Eleven for Japanese VR lovers. You might want to stop by at the end of the day and uh, pick up some Japanese or international craft beer. <laughs> Thank you, okay. So first of all, so here is uh, what I want to say you to you today. I would like to let you know about the fascinating uh, aspects of implementing OCR runtime in Rust from my experience of de developing Yoki for about two years. I'd also like to share with you how far uh, we have come with the implementation and what I plan to do in the future. This is the agenda for this session. First, I have explained uh, what I wanted to share with you just before today. After that, I will quickly explain the basic technology of what is the OCI control and time. Next, I will talk about why we are building the OCI control and time in Rust, how far it has been implemented, uh, and the problem and the future. Next, as some of you may know, let me explain a little about the OCI control and time. The diagram uh, shows the flow from Kubernetes of Kubernetes to container creation. The flow is from left to right. Okay, first request. Okay. First request to create a container is requested from Kubernetes to container runtime in a container runtime in okay, orange frame uh, by a CRI interface. It is mentioned uh, today's keynote. Container runtime is composed of two level, uh, high level and low level. Container, uh, the high level runtime uh, next requests the low, le low level runtime to create a container by an uh, interface called OCI runtime spec, which defines the commands and the JSON file that contains, uh, contains um, information about the container to be created. This means that the low level runtimes are compatibility with each other in terms of commands. For example, they always have uh, create subcommands uh, that create an uh, actual container. This is the main layer of this presentation. This is where Lanshi and Yoki, uh, which I will talk about in this presentation, are located. This low-level runtime then uses uh, Linux and other kernel features to create containers. Next, I will ex explain simply three functions actually used in Linux kernel to create containers. Okay. The first one is a pivot root, as you can imagine from the name. So this changes the root directory. When you create a container, the root directory is different from the host, right? That is due to pivot root. The second is namespace. This is different from our namespace in the context of Kubernetes. It allows our various resources to be isolated by process, such as PID and or network a lot. For example, a container and a host may have different visible uh, processes and PIDs. Uh, this is because the PID namespace is different in the host and in the container. 
Okay, the last one is the she group. Many of you may be familiar with this one. It is a feature that allows a resource limit. I'm sure uh, you have written CPU and uh, memory limits for pods in your manifest. The limit value is past C group and uh, becomes a resource limit for the container. There are many types of resources uh, that can be limited, but CPU and the memory are the most common. Also recently, Kubernetes has made a bit of a new story with its support for C group v2. Yoki is a low-level container runtime in Rust using those features I mentioned. I have been developing it as my hobby since January 2021. It has been developed uh, for about two years. Since I have been developing it as a hobby from the time I started until now, so it is vendor neutral. The repository is under containers where we developed Podman and other things. It has more than 4,000 stats on GitHub. It is also sometimes used as a container library for Rust. Uh, most recently, the container runtime for Docker Wasm is a library developed by Yoki. By the way, the name means a uh, container in Japanese. Let's go into the reason for implementing Yoki in Rust. In this presentation, I would like to talk in detail about three advantages. First, the most straightforward is a good match with the Linux kernel. More precisely, it needs to manipulate process in detail. As it is adapted as the second language of the Linux kernel, Rust has less difficult in using kernel features. At least, it will not be difficult to handle system calls and so on in the future. Next is the Wasm. Recently, there has been a lot of talk about Docker Wasm support. Last uh, makes it easy to handle uh, this area as well. The last one is the performance. Last is a lightweight language in terms of execution speed and memory footprint. So there are advantages in the, that area as well. First, I will talk about good match with the Linux kernel. This talk is going to focus on one system call. This system call is setNS, which allows you to associate a thread with the namespace I mentioned just before. For example, uh, you might use the exec command to enter a container. In the context of a namespace, you are breaking into an existing container by linking a new process to its namespace. However, there is a limitation to this system call. It cannot be used in a multi-thread environment. Now, how is it implemented in Lanshi, uh, which is currently, use, currently the most widely used uh, Go implementation? The Go language runtime uh, itself runs in multi-threaded, so Lanshi is limited by that. Also, uh, Lanshi is a Go implementation. The C language is actually largely responsible for the container crea creation in Lanshi. First uh, comes a request to create a container from the high-level runtime on the left in, di in the diagram side toward Lanshi. At this time, Lanshi's create subcommand is called. This part of create command is implemented only in the Go languages. Here, Lanshi does the part that can be handled uh, by the Go languages. For example, uh, creating a C group uh, which has a file system like interface and can be easily handled by Go language. It then calls itself from the create command by calling a slash proc slash self slash exec in it. This means calling Lanshi init command. At this point, argument and such a passed uh, through environment variables or pipe. And she uh, passes the strings and such to pass the argument. Now, at this time, Lanshi init does the she processing uh, before the Go language runtime starts. This is implementing, uh, imp sorry, this is implemented uh, using uh, something called the she Go, 
which is not much sled because it runs before the Go language runtime is, is started. So ZNS can be used without any limitation. C language part uh, of the program handles namespace related processing, RP bot load, and other tasks that actually create the container. This is how uh, Lanshi creates the container. However, as you can see, uh, Lanshi had an issue with the, with the need to process in it, in it part, which is not necessary. Now, at some length, I have explained the process of creating a container for Lanshi. However, Lust does not uh, require the slash self, slash block, slash exec init command as mentioned just before. This is because Rust can be implemented in a single thread. Single and the advantage of this is what fewer calls to clone are required. Container startup is in millisecond, therefore there is a performance penalty for calling clone too often. The init command is also a difficult side of the init command from a security point of view. As some of you may actually know, there was a security problem with the self-exec in the past. Rust does not need to handle that part in the first place. Also, Rust has been adapted as a second language for Linux. Uh, it is expected to be more compatible with the Linux kernel in the future. Next, you all know that WASP and Rust are good friends. Recently, uh, Docker has made an announcement about WASM. Yoki has also completed, completed support for version. For detail on how to use it, please defer to our documentation. I know this is a little confusing to say support version, so here is a demo. Okay. First, uh, prepare a directory for the container root directory. Here, so I have a version file uh, named hello.wasm. When you, uh, when you run the container with the run command uh, based on this directory, hello was will be run and hello will be output. Okay. Okay. Now, in, in the JSON of the container's configuration file, uh, it is uh, written to execute the WASM file. In the normal container, commands such as echo or hard sleep or something are written in this field. Yoki supports WASM, so you can directly specify a WASM file and execute it. The WASM runtime will do the rest. In other words, uh, interesting, uh, instead of normal commands, uh, file written in entry, etc., can be directly passed the WASM runtime uh, without any user modification. Since Rust is widely used in the WASM world, the implementation in Yoki was quite easy. Next, uh, let me talk about the lightness brought about by Rust. This is a quote from Yoki's readme, uh, which summarizes the time taken from container creation to deleting uh, using the same container image. Please refer to Yoki's readme for detail about the version and the other environment uh, in, which it, in which it was run. The first Shilang implemented in C languages only, followed by Yoki, Lanshi takes almost twice as long as Shiram. This is probably due to limitation of the set NS I mentioned. You can see that Yoki is also reasonable first. Then from a memory perspective, Yoki can start containers with tighter memory limitations due to its smaller memory footprint. For example, you can use Podman to start a container with one megabyte of memory. In such cases, Yoki can still run, can still start containers. To be honest, so I don't know how this will benefit you in the current world, in the current world. However, it may have a future in an area such as IoT or a car or something. So I have explained three advantages of using Rust with the OCI runtime. The ability to be unlimited by namespace, the good match with a new player called Wasm. Finally, we talked about memory footprint and performance. 
the language comparison itself means nothing. Both a great language, I think. However, since I got this que question the most, I will lightly touch on the pros and cons of choosing a Go and Rust uh, respectively at the end. The Go language has been the top player in this field for a long time. Of course, Lanshi is a cool product and it, support, it supports the world tied today. It's not easy. It's very awesome. And the libraries they have created the great being able to use them in a super advantage. And with that comes a great history in the content world from a historical perspective. Lanshi is a spin out project from Docker and I assume uh, that's also why the Go language was used. However, there are limitations in the uh, area of OCR runtime, so uh, as mentioned just before. On the other hand, Last is still a rookie in this field. Actually, it lacks some libraries that Go has. However, it is simpler and safer to implement in the OCR runtime. Let's talk about how far Yoki OCR runtime uh, in Last has actually implemented this. You may be wondering how well uh, Yoki supports the various container features and corner cases that are currently used in the real world. First of all, OCI uh, has prepared a test to see if Yoki, is, uh, Yoki supports the standard feature uh, of OCI runtime. These tests are passed. Next, we can also uh, pass the container integration test using Yoki instead of Lanshi. This means that using Yoki instead of Lanshi in ContainerD should work. This was recently achieved by, by YJDoc2. Next, let's talk about Kubernetes, which is an area I honestly so don't know uh, how to support yet due to my lack of knowledge. However, there is already an installation option with Yoki in Kube Adam. Yeah. I have not tried it myself, but I have heard of the, I, I have heard reports of being able to install it and start port. The next topic is to keep up with the latest future in the content world. These are not, uh, uh, these are not always mentioned in the uh, specification itself. First is the WASM support mentioned before. And Yoki also has support uh, for Shigroup V2. And Kubernetes also supports rootless container, which will be a high profile feature in the future. This allows you to use a container without using a root permission. This is all I have to say about the current situation. Next, uh, let me finally talk about the problems and the future. I will talk uh, two major issues. They are old kernel support and the real world experience. First, let's talk about support for old kernels. Containers have a bit long history and things uh, like Lanshi can run on old kernels. I gave up. Yoki does not support all the kernels. Uh, basically, we support since a Linux kernel 5.15. Instead, we have tried to speed up development and actively adapt new features. Next, let's talk about experience. I have, heard, I have heard that some of Yoki's library are being used uh, or are being considered for use within the company. But it is still in the zone where people who are interested in using it as a hobby are using it. So containers are important software from a security point of view. So this is an issue that cannot be ignored. Therefore, Yoki is currently working on a strategy standing on the shoulders of giants. There are a lot of tests and, the, and many knowledges uh, stored in the high-level runtime. Since the OCI runtime is just a binary, so it can pass those tests as long as it is renamed. Generally, if it's named Lanshi, so you can run the test uh, with your own low-level content runtime. Currently, Yoki is able to pass the continuity, um, continuity test by using the name Lanshi. Next is the future roadmap. First is support for WASM Edge. This is coming soon with PR already in the works. 
and we aim to pass the Lanshi test I mentioned before. We are looking at the tracing support for open telemetry. This will be a feature that is not available in the other runtimes. Finally, we are always, always considering interesting features uh, using the latest kernel feature. We have uh, actually implemented IOU link for asynchronized C group creation, but gave up on it because it didn't give us, it didn't give us the performance we were, we were looking for. This is a rough roadmap plan for the future of Yogi. If anyone uh, is interested, I would be happy to talk with you. By the way, Dokkawasm support would have taken the world by surprise recently. Do you know the low-level container runtime used for Dokkawasm support? It is called Lanwaji in Rust, uh, in Rust and is developed by DEIS Labos, a Microsoft group. This container runtime is designed for running Wasm, but it is not yet uh, uh, it is not able to meet the OCR runtime specification. Docker Wasm is exciting, but this piece is currently missing from Docker Wasm. The reason is simple. It takes time to implement. Without this piece, it cannot be used safely in your production with Wasm or uh, container. Do you know this piece? It's called Yogi. Yogi and the Lanwaj team are looking to collaborate to meet this piece. I'm happy to announce uh, this at Kube Day. Of course, this would be a great feature, a great step forward for running Wasm on Kubernetes or Docker and so on. We are still in the discussion, in discussion phase in closed and have not completely decided how we will work together, but please wait for announcements that will uh, please you all. At the end, Yoki is supported by a lot of contributors. Without their support, Yoki would not uh, be what it is today, since Yoki is developed entirely on hobby time. Thank you very much. And I look forward to meeting future contributors at, uh, at Kubede. Thank you for listening. But are there any questions? No? No? Okay. No, thank you. I think your presentation, uh, do you have any unsafe code, unsafe as in uh, just unsafe? Ah, yes, okay, good question. Of course, so Yoki has uh, unsafe code uh, a little, so because we have to use system code directly. So for example, uh, Kuron is unsafe for last. Any other questions? Okay, so I have a question. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, we have uh, some choice, choices in uh, low level okay. run time. Yeah. And uh, Uh, this one. Okay. Okay. And yeah. um, uh, your uh, mm -hmm. idea, Yoki. Yoki. Yeah. Uh, is uh, uh, one of them. Sorry, so, come again. One. Oh, Yoki is one of them. Ah, yes, one of them. Mm. Yeah. And uh, uh, of course, uh, there is a big merit. That's right. Big, big merit. Big, big. Sorry. Big. Um, good point. Ah, good point. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yoki, so, hmm. so you want to say, so what is uh, better uh, than other low-level runtimes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, but good to, question. Uh, could, you, could you say, mm. is there any uh, demerit or weak point? Uh, yes, good point, okay. 
So, okay, first of all, so I mentioned in my presentation, so Yoki, so Yoki is a very uh, newer of this world, so low-level lifetime lab world, and the Lanshi is, uh, is learning a top player for a long time. So Lanshi has uh, a lot of knowledge of this area. So, so I think this is a big problem. Uh, big issues, so Yoki does not have experience on learning on the productions in, uh, for example, so Lanshi has uh, already learning, so a lot of uh, words, so a GKE or a AWS or Azure, so, but Lanshi does not, uh, Lanshi has never learned it, so it is, uh, I think so, many people want to use uh, safe con low-level content runtime, I think, so we have to got experience about it, I think. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, you very much.